Hello students. In today's video, we are going to study hyperprolactinemia and its treatment with prolactin inhibitors, namely bromocryptin and cabergoline. Now, as the name suggests, hyper means raised or elevated. Emia refers to blood levels. So, hyperprolactinemia is a condition where the levels of prolactin rise in the blood. Now, in order to understand symptoms and treatment of hyperprolactinemia, let's quickly revise physiological functions and regulation of secretion of prolactin. As we have already studied in our previous video, prolactin in short PRL is a peptide hormone. It is secreted in the blood by anterior pituitary. Now, lacto refers to milk and Genesis means synthesis. So, as prolactin is required for the synthesis of milk by the mammary glands or the breast, it is also called as lactogenic hormone. There are three main physiological functions of prolactin. As we all are aware, blood levels of prolactin rise in women during pregnancy and lactation. Prolactin is responsible for inducing growth and development of breast during pregnancy as it prepares the breast for the synthesis of milk postpartum after delivery. Second important function of prolactin is lactation. After childbirth, prolactin induces synthesis of milk. Very important to understand here that there are two hormones essential for the process of lactation. One is the prolactin and other is the oxytocin. Prolactin is essential for the synthesis of milk while oxytocin is essential for release or letdown of milk from the breast. Now in addition to this increased prolactin either naturally during pregnancy and lactation or due to pathological reasons inhibit the release of GnRH that is gonadotropin releasing hormone from hypothalamus. Now this further reduces secretion of follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone from anterior pituitary. Now as long as the prolactin levels are high it causes amenorrhea that is absence of menstruation reduced ovulation and infertility in females. So these are the main physiological functions of prolactin. Now let's quickly review the process of regulation of prolactin secretion. Look at this figure. This is a zoomed view of hypothalamus located in the brain and just below the hypothalamus is located the pituitary gland. Now there are two lo lobes of pituitary gland. This is anterior pituitary and this is posterior pituitary. Now prolactin is synthesized by lactotrophs in anterior pituitary. PRH that is a prolactin releasing hormone released by hypothalamus stimulates lactotrophs to release prolactin in the blood. On the other hand PIH that is prolactin inhibiting hormone also called as dopamine inhibits lactotrophs to release prolactin. So a natural homeostasis is maintained and a and high or low blood levels of prolactin could be maintained as per the requirement of body. So look here, uh, PRH that is a prolactin releasing hormone increase blood levels of prolactin. Whereas PIH that is a prolactin inhibiting hormone or dopamine reduce blood levels of prolactin. So dopamine reduces levels of prolactin. So obviously dopamine agonist like uh, bromocryptin and cabergoline also reduce uh, blood prolactin levels. So these drugs are called as uh, prolactin inhibitors and are used in the treatment of hyperprolactinemia. Another very important point to remember hypothyroidism that is a reduced functioning of thyroid gland increase the secretion of TRH that is a thyrotropin releasing hormone from hypothalamus. Now TRH increases secretion of prolactin. So hypothyroidism can also cause hyperprolactinemia. So 
these are the factors that uh, regulate the secretion of prolactin hormone. Now let's talk about the normal physiological serum levels of prolactin. Prolactin levels are found to be low in males and also in non-lactating non-pregnant females. However, prolactin levels are found to be naturally high in pregnant and lactating women. In males, blood prolactin levels range from 2 to 18 nanogram per ml, while in non-pregnant, non-lactating females, prolactin levels range from 2 to 30 nanogram per ml. Now let's understand the definition of hyperprolactinemia. As already discussed, hyperprolactinemia is the condition of elevated prolactin levels in the blood. That is, increase in the level of prolactin in the blood is called as hyperprolactinemia. Prolactinemia could be physiological as during pregnancy and lactation. And hyperprolactinemia can be pathological or induced by the drugs. So, pregnancy and lactation are the physiological natural causes of rise in the blood levels of prolactin. Now, let's understand causes of uh, pathological hyperprolactinemia. First and the most important cause is uh, prolactinoma, that is benign tumors of lactophores found in the anterior pituitary. Now, these benign tumors produce excessive amount of prolactin. Another cause is the hypothyroidism. Reduced functioning of thyroid gland stimulates increased release of TRH that is thyrotropin releasing hormone which stimulates the secretion of prolactin. Now as prolactin is excreted by the kidneys, chronic renal failure can cause reduced excretion of prolactin which increases blood levels of prolactin. Now in addition to this, prolactin is metabolized in the liver. So Diseases of liver like liver cirrhosis leads to reduced metabolism of prolactin. So the levels of prolactin increase in the blood. So these are the, uh, these are the main causes of uh, pathological hyperprolactinemia. After pathological hyperprolactinemia, let's understand causes of drug induced hyperprolactinemia. Now by now we have understood that dopamine inhibits release of prolactin and thus dopamine reduces serum prolactin levels. So dopamine reduces levels of prolactin in the blood. Now if a drug blocks dopamine receptors or a drug blocks the action of dopamine, it will obviously increase serum levels of prolactin. So antipsychotic drugs like haloperidol, Flufenazine block dopamine receptors, thereby block the action of dopamine and increase or elevate serum prolactin levels. So, these are the main causes responsible for hyperprolactinemia. Now, let's understand signs and symptoms of uh, hyperprolactinemia. Now, main signs and symptoms of uh, hyperprolactinemia in females are galactoria, that is excess secretion of milk by the mammary glands. Then, menstrual disturbances due to inhibition of uh, gonadotropin releasing hormone. Now, these menstrual distur disturbances can cause amenorrhea, that is absence of menstruation, oligomenorrhea, that is reduced menstruation and this reduces ovulation and can cause infertility. Now, as long as the prolactin levels remain high, this type of infertility is seen in the woman. In males, hyperprolactinemia rarely causes galactoria, but it produces gynecomastia, that is enlargement of the breast. Now, reduced gonadotropin releasing hormone secretion leads to reduced testosterone and this causes hypogonadism. Now, hypogonadism results in decreased libido, impotence, infertility and problems like erectile dysfunction. Now, other signs and symptoms of uh, hyperprolactinemia that can be observed both in males and females are visual disturbances. Now, this occurs 
if uh, hyperprolactinemia is caused because of prolactinomas. Now these tumors they compress optic chiasma and this causes visual disturbances. Now headaches are also caused by hyperprolactinemia. Low bone, mo low bone mass due to reduced estrogen in the females and reduced testosterone in the males is also observed. So these are the signs and symptoms of hyperprolactinemia. Now let's discuss treatment of uh, hyperprolactinemia. Treatment of hyperprolactinemia depends on the cause. Now treatment of drug induced hyperprolactinemia. Now drug producing hyperprolactinemia should be changed or discontinued as per the discretion of the physician. Now as discussed hypothyroidism can cause hyperprolactinemia. Hypothyroidism is treated with thyroid replacement therapy. Now prolactinoma uh, that is benign tumors of lactotrophs in anterior pituitary produce excessive prolactin. Now prolactinoma is treated with medicines or by surgical removal of prolactin tumor. Now medicines that treat hyperprolactinemia are termed as prolactin inhibitors. Now these drugs are dopamine agonist. These drugs bind to dopamine receptors and activate them and thus produce actions similar to dopamine. Now uh, these drugs namely bromocryptin and cabergoline inhibit synthesis and secretion of prolactin by anterior pituitary. So this is the treatment approach for hyperprolactinemia. Now let's discuss pharmacology of uh, prolactin inhibitors namely bromocryptin and cabergoline. Now these drugs are the first line drugs in the treatment of hyperprolactinemia. Bromocryptin and cabergoline reduce elevated prolactin levels and thus they normalize prolactin levels, restore or again normalize gonadal functioning and reduce tumor size of uh, prolactinoma in majority of patients. Now bromocryptin and cabergoline are dopamine agonist. Now these drugs bind to dopamine D2 receptors located on lactophose, activate them and produce action similar to that of dopamine. So these drugs inhibit synthesis and release of prolactin. Bromocryptin is being used since uh, 1970. Large clinical data is available for this drug. While cabergoline is a relatively newer dopamine agonist. Now as we all know D1 and D2 are the main dopamine receptors. And D2 receptors are found to be present on lactophose in anterior pituitary. Bromocryptin has a greater action on D2 receptors compared to D1. It also exhibits weak alpha adrenergic blocking effect. Whereas capergoline is relatively more selective and more potent D2 agonist. Half-life of bromocryptin is 3 to 6 hours and it is required to be administered once daily. While cabergoline is longer acting, its uh, half-life is more than 60 hours and it is administered once or twice weekly. That's why it is highly convenient for the patients. 60 to 70 percent prolactinomas show regression or reduce in size and also exhibit improvement in neurological symptoms like uh, improvement in the visual disturbances with the therapy of bromocryptin. However, the tumor and other symptoms may reappear once the therapy with bromocryptin is discontinued. Now, relatively higher percentage of uh, uh, patients with hyperprolactinemia show improvement in their symptoms with capergoline. In addition to this, recurrence of tumor or symptoms do not occur on discontinuation of capergoline. So, capergoline is found to be more efficacious.
Now, side effects of uh, bromocryptin are frequent and dose related. Early side effects include nausea, vomiting, constipation, nasal blockage, etc. Side effects that appear late with the bromocryptin therapy are the behavioral alterations, mental uh, confusion, hallucination, psychosis, etc. However, side effects produced by cabergoline are less frequent, are of a shorter duration and less severe. So overall, cabergoline has a much better side effect profile compared to bromocryptin. Now, bromocryptin is a first line drug for most cases of hyperprolactinemia. Bromocryptin is also used as an adjuvant. Uh, that means it is also used in addition with other drugs for the treatment of Parkinsonism. Now, cabergoline is also a first line drug and it is preferred over bromocryptin. It is preferred for the treatment of hyperprolactinemia. However, since uh, cabergoline is a relatively new drug, limited data is available on the safety of cabergoline in pregnancy. So this is in brief on the pharmacology of uh, bromocryptin, cabergoline and treatment of hyperprolactinemia. Please note that the Information provided in this video is meant exclusively for students from their examination point of view. For treatment of hyperprolactinemia, consult your physician. If you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.